This song is called Away in a Manger. <coughs> Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. No, no. I love the Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morning is night. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and take us to heaven to live with thee there. <coughs> Oh, yes, what a beautiful little song. Oh, the precious baby Lord Jesus. The only place they, they had a lame uh, uh, was on a cattle feeder <laughs> in the hay. Just laid him down on the hay. Put I guess they put a blanket down first before they laid him down. And and uh, he didn't complain a bit, you know. And then he just, uh, <laughs> the cattle, you know, the cows that were in there, they began to moo and everything, you know, like, hello, Lord Jesus. And he just kind of smiled at them. Oh, hello, cows. <laughs> I know y'all. I created y'all. So, <laughs> and yeah, and so then they just smiled back and forth. The cows and, and little baby Jesus just smiled in the crib and went back to sleep. No problem at all. Mm -mm -mm. And he, that he was just laying there on that hay. Doesn't even say, doesn't say they laid a blanket, but I'm sure they had some kind of blanket between him and, and the hay. But <laughs> just imagine that, you know. No place to be born, but except just there on the, just be laid on a, on a, in a uh, cattle feeder, a manger. That's what the manger was. Just, you know, thing, you know, it's like this that they put the hay in. And so anyway, so it's such a sweet little song. But <clears throat> uh, this song is called The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. <laughs> oh my goodness, I sure do. I sure do mess up sometimes. <laughs> That's too good to top. I, I, I keep that. <laughs> oh, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of science, <laughs> the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the Oh, rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. Oh, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. And you'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll 
Moshe. And thou cherish the old rugged cross till my trope is at last I lay down. And I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory to bear it. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it on dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trope is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trope is at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. <laughs> How marvelous that is. If it wasn't been for the old rugged cross, where would we be? <laughs> like a song said, where would my soul be? Oh, if it wasn't for Jesus, where uh, would I be? Oh, what a Savior. <laughs> On a hill far away, <laughs> a long ways from here, you know, but and as it, but the cross stood there. I mean, it was the emblem of suffering and shame, you know. Um, <laughs> shame before in more ways than one, and it wasn't Jesus hanging on the cross. It was <laughs> as shameful as the people that put him there, you know. And and uh, my my my, and the reasons they put him there, and uh, you know the reasons that. He had to die and all that. That that's what's shameful, and so he represents that by we look at the cross and we see how that the Lord of glory and all of His love can come down. He can heal the sick and do all these other things, and yet mankind at that point was so uh, down into his uh, blindness and evil that he uh, would take somebody just just to save their own traditions or whatever it was and other things and in their own blood just plain blindness would just hang a person like that to a cruel cross and just you know nail them up there and then let them die upon a cross after they had done all that good and it just shows you how far that man had gone and that's what the shame is of it and so it says it's suffering and shame it's the emblem of suffering and shame and it shows what we all all deserve to have that kind of suffering for our evil and our blindness and our sin and all that kind of thing. And so Jesus did that for us, you know, to show us what happens when the uh, people uh, become so gross and so blind and so evil that they can't even see when there's a good man that, done, that did no wrong. And yet because of some uh, reason that they have a... Uh, thought up in their blindness, they feel like, you know, nailing them to a cross. And so it's the emblem of suffering and shame. Uh, so, uh, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best, see, he was the dearest and the best. The dearest and the best had to suffer the most. 
Mm -mm. The dearest and the best always, you know, they in a blind world, in an evil world, the dearest and best always suffer the most. For a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies. I lay down all my trophies and take up the cross as a trophy, as the only trophy, as the main trophy. And I, and I uh, cling to it instead of my own trophies. I lay them down and I will cl and take up. He lays down his trophies and takes up the cross and clings to the cross and he changes it someday for a crown. <clears throat> to the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. My, my, my. You know, because just because of what it represents and everything and uh, you know, and uh, we'll just gladly rebear, bear that kind of approach because it uh, represents an effort to bring man out of sin and, that, and for him to see the love of God, you know, and, uh, and that effort to bring man out of sin and make him see the, the love of God cause him to be nailed upon a cross because just simply because of the blindness. And so uh, because of that, you know, is his shame and reproach we should gladly bear. And he'll call me some day. To my home far away, where you know I uh, live uh, in glory for where His glory forever I'll share, and then we're able to share that glory if we cling to the old rugged cross and you know and uh, worship that and live with that and, and witness for that and everything. And one day His glory we will share, you know, uh, in uh, in heaven. And um, so I'll share, and I'll. And in Christ, the, and I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. Cling to the old rugged cross. That's the course. It changes someday for a crown. And then uh, verse 3, oh, oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world. It was despised by the, you know, the blind people and the evil world. So despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For it was the dear Lamb of God, you know, that come to the, the Lamb of God that cometh to take away the sins of the world. The dear Lamb of God left his glory above it. He came all the way down from great glory up in heaven where he commanded angels and commanded everything, was the Lord of glory and everything, come all the way down from heaven to die upon that cross and bear, you know, and, uh, and bear the sins of the world uh, on dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies. Well, I'm going over that again. Number, uh, verse number four. In the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine. You know, the divine blood. His father was, as he was uh, uh, concepted by the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, immaculate conception. His father was God. Uh, and uh, and the blood was divine. The blood was divine, and, uh, and so uh, he got his body from. Uh, some people said his body from uh, from his mother Mary, and his blood from from God, God the Father, and so on. And so he was divine blood, and the divine blood was what flowed out, and the divine blood flowed out, and that's why when we get under the blood, you know, see, then uh, uh, nothing can come against us, and we. And we can, uh, and we're healed through the blood, and we're saved through the blood, and all that kind of thing. So his blood, so divine, was a wondrous. Uh, we see, in that way of wondrous beauty, we see. For it was on that old rugged cross Jesus suffered, and he died to pardon, in order to pardon and sanctify us. Not only pardon, but sanctify, sanctified through the blood. Woo, sanctify and set us apart until his love so that we can understand and to teach us to understand his love and why we need need to love and what love is about and how much God loved us and all of that. Oh, justified us and then and then sanctified us, set apart, call us and then and then uh uh, uh and then he predestined us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and then one day we'll be glorified. All of that is taught in the Writings of Paul. And so uh, I'll uh, cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies lay, I lay down. So that's the last of that. And uh, <clears throat> so 
Oh, so precious a psalm. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Here my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross, I'll ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. And he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory to the above to bear it on dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. In the old rugged cross, a stain with blood <coughs> so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. <clears throat> For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful song. I never viewed that song as one that was hard to sing, but <laughs> I keep getting off on some other tune. I, I haven't sang it in so long, you know. And But it's a dear song. I'm going to have to sing it more often. I, You know, it's, it shouldn't be that hard to sing. Uh, it's just, I guess, that I just hadn't sung it in a long time. But uh, I'll sing it two or three times, I'll get better. <laughs> but I'm not going to attempt it again right now. I already messed it up enough. <laughs> so I'm going to go on to the others. I'm going to go on to another song. And <laughs> But it's such a dear song, I felt I needed to sing it. And it kind of goes with the way in a manger, because he started in a manger and ended up on the cross. And how sad all that is. But it, but it, but it ended up so victoriously. He was born victoriously, and then he ended up victoriously. Dying for our sins, and then he was rose from the dead, and now we're all victorious over sin. So it was a marvelous, marvelous story. The whole thing is, oh, and we're going to be studying that, you know, about how it's, we're just about to come to the cross in our studies on the New Testament, which we'll be doing in a minute. And uh, after I see if I can find one song somewhere that I can actually sing. <laughs> this one was, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, this one's called I Believe in a Hill. Call Mount Calvary. There are things as we travel this earth shifting sand that transcend all the reason of man. 
But the things that matter the most in this whole wide world, they can never be held in our hand. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. <coughs> and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to raise us to to change lives today for he changed me completely a new life is mine that is why by the cross i will cling i believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend i believe in a hill called mount calvary i believe whatever the cross and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. Mm -mm -mm. My, my, my. <laughs> it's starting too early in the morning, I guess. I just haven't got my voice going yet. <laughs> but that's a good thing about this. After a while, it gets going. <laughs> it always gets going after a while. And I praise the Lord, man, I just keep praying. <laughs> Every few minutes I stop and I go and I pray again. Lord, bless my boys. Lord, anoint me again. Lord, anoint me again. But after a while, I finally, <laughs> I finally start, my voice starts blowing. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Uh, practice is supposed to make perfect. <laughs> Don't do it in my case, though. I'm so imperfect, I guess that's the reason. <clears throat> oh, my Jesus. <clears throat> I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe in the old rugged cross. I believe... In a hill called Mount Calvary, I'll believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today for he changed me completely and the new life is mine that is why by the cross i will stay oh i believe in a hill called mount calvary I believe in the old rugged cross. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and hope is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. I believe that this life with its great mysteries, surely someday will come to an end. But faith will conquer the darkness and death, and will lead me at last to my friend. So I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old rugged 
cross. <laughs> I will be coming out the pedal singer <laughs> if he <it> kills me. <laughs> I should have been easier if I'd had a, a piano going, you know, I guess. <laughs> I probably wouldn't stay with it if it was, though. So. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I, I, I learned to sing these songs at a cappella. <laughs> oh, amen. Praise God. We need to be able to sing them both ways. You know, because, you know, if you're out witnessing or something, or you're out, if you're out in some, well, you don't know what we'll encounter in persecution in times and everything. You know, and we may be... <coughs> <laughs> we may be rounded, rounded into camps or something at some point where there is no piano, you know, they won't lay out or, what, <coughs> or whatever, you know, and where we may be just out in some field somewhere, maybe in the army or something else, you know, you know, don't tell them where you end up out in the field somewhere, no piano, all kinds of places. I've been to all kinds of places where there was no piano, and you, and you need to be able to know how to sing these songs without a piano. You need to, you don't need to have to depend upon musical instruments to sing the song. We need to know the tune well enough to sing in any place and anywhere, just like we need to know. And I'm glad that made me think of that. That we need to take this old Bible here, this King James version, and we need to memorize as many scriptures as we can, because. One of these days, they may, they may try to remove all these Bibles from us, you know. It never, we never know. It'll never be removed forever, you know. On this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell can't, uh, you know, prevail against it. And, and the Bible will always be here, but temporarily, we could end up, they could end up removing it far. You know, like if you were moved, if you were uh, temporarily moved into some camp or something, you know, because of war or whatever, be or just bad government or whatever, whatever you know, in, in, in other countries of the world or even it could even happen here that uh, you moved in, into there and then they could go through, decide that that's wrong, you know, that that's uh, polluting people and minds or whatever, you know how they do in their evil mind and they could go through and, and examine everybody, you know, inspect everybody just like you do when you go in the army and, well, you know, when you go into boot camp, <laughs> They make you lay everything out, you know, that you've got. And then you uh, first you, you uh, package up your civilian clothes and mail them back because for that period of uh, boot camp, after that, you can have civilian clothes to wear when you go out on the weekends and everything. But in the boot camp, you can't have them for that eight weeks. You can't have no civilian clothes because you're not supposed to be doing it. You're supposed to have no contact with anything except the army for that two weeks. And so they, they make you package up your civilian clothes, mail them back home, and, uh, and then they go through it. Everything has to be laid out. And if there's things like radios and all and uh, tape recorders and, you know, CD players or, or, or whatever like that, uh, during just during the eight weeks of boot camp, it doesn't happen afterwards. It may not even still happen now. But the time when I went in, you had to, uh, you had to also... Uh, uh, Turn them in to be locked up until the end of boot camp, you know, or mail them back home one or the other. And so there was a, you you had what was issued, and that was it. You know, you were a GI, you know, the word, a government issue. If only what was government issued, that's all you could have for that period of that eight weeks. You know, thank God at the end of the eight weeks, it, you know, they used up on some of that, and you was able to have all them things. But and uh, <laughs> Lord to God, that's uh, I was able to have. Uh, uh, get, have a lot, make a lot of a uh, good uh, gospel music uh, tapes and everything, you know, that uh, unlike what I've even had since, you know, I was able, it was all available, all those wonderful uh, uh, music st uh, stores that they provided, uh, uh, especially in the, uh, you know, the audio clubs and everything that they had there uh, for the, especially with the Air Force, they had it even more than they did with with the army, and it was usually a air force base nearby. And you could go there, and then even the PX had some of them for the army. And you could buy these, you know, uh, tape recorders at a, at a great discount, and you could get a real expensive one that was really good, you know, and uh, at a good price. And and uh, then we were able to uh, uh, tape up all this good gospel music and everything like that. And so it was a marvelous time, it, uh, it, how that goes. But so anyway, so let's see the next song I've got to sing here. 
So what I'm just saying is, is that we we found times out there in the field and everything where they, where we had church services out in the field. You know, we had church services right out there in the uh, uh, place where we were training in the field. And, you know, chaplain would come out there. Sometimes, sometimes he was unavailable and people would fill in. I'd filled in a few times like that myself. But people would fill in, you know, for the chaplain if he was unable to come out. out and, um, and then we would sing the songs and everything, a cappella, and, you know, we didn't have piano. So there's times like that when you don't have it. So you need to be able to know how to do it. <laughs> I wonder since I haven't done that, why I don't. <laughs> I could sing then, but... <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, uh, so, uh, and this song is called Heavenly Jubilee. Some glad, mor some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Oh, yes, <laughs> millions there will join the song. With them we shall be, oh, praising Christ uh, through ages long, heaven's jubilee, oh, praise God. Is that the end of that beautiful song? Oh, I guess I... <laughs> Did I actually go through that whole song? It didn't seem like it was anything to it. It wasn't hard to sing like some of the others were. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. In that happy, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Hmm. Oh. Seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead. Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with him to be. All the living saints will, will fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Yeah, that was better. Let's see. No, that's not all, all of it yet. Millions there will join the song. With them we shall be praising Christ through ages long. Heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing. Yeah. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, in that, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. <clears throat> oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Oh, uh, when with all the heavenly hosts singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with whom we shall be, praising Christ through ages long, ever jubilee. Oh, what shouting, oh, what singing, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, 
when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Oh, praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. And then I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling home. Yes, I feel like traveling home. I feel like traveling home. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. It's glittering uh, towers, the sun outshine, I feel like traveling on. That heavenly mansion shall be mine, I feel like traveling on. Oh, I feel like traveling on, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Have others, uh, let others seek a home below, I feel like traveling on, with, with the, that the flames and the floods devour or flow, I feel like traveling home, oh, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bad and fair, I feel like traveling on. Oh, the Lord has been so good to me, I feel like traveling on. Until that blessed home I see, I feel like traveling on. Oh, I feel like traveling on, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Let others seek a home below, I feel like traveling on. Where the flames can devour and the waves can overflow, I feel like traveling home. Oh, I feel like traveling home. I feel like traveling home. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling home. Oh, yes, this could be a home. It'll be a home where the blown flames cannot devour or the, the waves or the floods cannot destroy and I've had damage by both of those different things so I had experience with that you know I've had damage fire damage and I've had blood damage uh, uh, where, where it wasn't a big blood you know like they have in some places but it was just enough that it damaged you know some of the uh, buildings you know and uh, a little bit you know not a whole lot or anything but I had just enough damage that I didn't like it very well and then I had uh, had got into a uh, into a, uh, what do they call that, a, a rapid downpour, uh, uh, right, with rising creeks and everything, and had a car, the car carpets damaged real bad one time, and, uh, had a time getting all the smell out of that, you know, and so I know what, what they're talking about about that, uh, but, um, where, um, uh, flames devour and waves or blow. You know that, that can happen. That we can be, we can have that kind of flood damage, or we can have water damage, or you know, our car sometimes will get flooded. Uh, you know, if we're driving in a downpour, and and uh, flames can it can uh, mess things up, either smoke up our house or burn down stuff. You know, all them kinds of things can happen. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yes, <laughs> some of my. Uh, commentaries and everything one where an air conditioner caught on fire and, and the fireman was there right away to get it out but the smoke went through and uh, it didn't hurt them the books but it they always had a just a little bit of smoke uh, 
a uh, little bit of little bit of that color, you know, on some of the pages of, of them all. After that, <laughs> you know, and no no problem it went with inside the book, but on the outside it just got a tinges of smoke on it from that smoke going through, you know, and uh, didn't burn the house down or anything, but it damaged those books and oh, and so you know I've had big my experiences with that, mm -mm -mm. and there's other been others that I'm not even going. <laughs> I can go into all of them. <laughs> oh, my, my, the Lord Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so, uh, but this next song, let's see. Let me see. This is uh, when we uh, all get to heaven. Let's see what time is it. Getting about time to start the study. Uh, will there be, will doubt be made hope? Okay. Ooh, oh, how I love Jesus. Yesterday's gone. Today may never be mine. Yeah. Okay, oh how I love Jesus. Oh, there, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music on my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a fierce, darksome path, you sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Praise the Lord. There will. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes, so I guess that. That must be all of them. It didn't seem like I have sang very many songs like I thought I had here, about five or six. But according to the time, it shows that I've been singing a while. So <laughs> evidently I've been singing a while. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> and so it's time for, for me to, uh, for us to, Go into our New Testament exposition of the New Testament. 
And we are now studying in the book of uh, Matthew, and we're just about to bend, uh, just about to uh, finish the book of Matthew. We're in uh, chapter twenty-six, verse uh, 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 chapter twenty-six, verse thirty-six. That's what we left off at, and we'll take back up there. Oh, yes, and so I am the chief expositor, and as such, I am going to do my best to exposit. You know, and we are going to, even though we're plodding along slow, we're going to determine to keep plodding till we get through the New Testament. We're going to, even though we're we're uh, uh, plowing uh, slow and we're plowing low, we're plowing straight till we get to the gate, to the gate up there. We're going to plow Straight to the gate. <laughs> We're going to plow deep as the Lord will allow me to plow. As he gives me the anointing to do so. And uh, we're going to be on here, uh, hopefully, every day, seven days a week, 365. We're pretty close to it. I mean, I'm hoping to be there and with, with the grace of God and everything, teaching these lessons. And so... Um, We'll take up there in verse 36. Uh, verse 36, he said, uh, the, uh, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. You know, this is now this is talking about he's in the uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. <clears throat> he's already had the Last Supper, and and uh, Judas is already uh, he's already pointed out Judas has been the one that betrayed him, and Judas has gone out and uh, he's uh, either received his thirty pieces of silver or getting ready to. And Jesus, Jesus is now in the Garden of Gethsemane. Praying about, you know, what he's about to have to go through. And then, you know, along will come Judas at some point, you know, and, uh, and betray him. And so then he's asking the, uh, the other disciples to pray with him. And they seem to be tired or something. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, so it says, uh, he says, uh, Tarry with me uh, here and and pray with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face. I didn't remember that part. Fell on his face and prayed, saying, "O oh, my Father, if it be Thy will, if it be possible." He said, "If it be possible." I always thought he said, "If it be Thy will," but it says. It doesn't say that. It always says, Oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? You know, he, he didn't even make it a whole hour. And uh, he said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The uh, spirit is willing. Let's see. The spirit is indeed, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, the spirit indeed is willing to. You know, pray all night like that. But a lot of times, the flesh is weak. And uh, my, 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 we know we need to be praying all night for revival in this country and everything. But uh, And for, you know, the, the times that we're in and all like that. But a lot of times, our flesh is weak and we just can't uh, find ourselves doing it. And, uh, you know, and then you have to be careful to do uh, enough, but uh, not so much that you, <laughs> you know, you try to, Fast and pray for two or three days, and then you end up in trouble because you uh, the, the the lack of the rest and everything catches up to you. 
and um, and then <laughs> we end up, uh, in, you know, in a jam. And so uh, we got to be, we got to measure it out, you know, appropriately. You know, you might, you know, pray uh, all night one night, but then you better catch that sleep up, you know, and so forth. And then you may fast one day, but you, then you probably better, you know, kind of. I kind of wait a little bit and then fast again another day like that, you know, and so, you know, you kind of have to, have to, have to, you, depending upon you and your constitution, you have to kind of gauge how much you can do without getting yourself into trouble and uh, weakening yourself to, you know, to where you can end up uh, being susceptible uh, to things, you know, and so then uh, it says, uh, but but at least he could have gone an hour. I, I do believe he could have at least gone an hour anyway. <laughs> and uh, he was a little, uh, okay, he said, uh, watch and pray. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so he said, he went away again. The second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them uh, asleep again for. Their eyes were heavy. I can imagine <laughs> their eyes were heavy, and and he uh, he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying, "I didn't realize he had done it three times." Saying the same words, then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, "Sleep on now. You might as well go ahead and sleep." <laughs> He said, oh, well, <laughs> I give up. I just go ahead and sleep. <laughs> you know, evidently they just didn't get it or something. I, I, you know, I don't know. You know, he knew that the time had come and that this was actually, you know, a historical moment for all the ages and everything. You know, I mean, they come down to a central point in all the time, you know. And so, you know, I mean, knowing that, of course, you would. No one would want to be asleep at a time like that, you know. I mean, uh, that's the time to be awake, you know, at least for that period of time and then sleep later or whatever, you know. But uh, they didn't didn't realize that, that things was adding up so fast and as he did. And so they thought, well, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll rest so we'll be prepared for tomorrow, you know, and all like that. And so they just didn't. They didn't get the message somehow or another, and so they were tired, you know, from a long day or whatever, and so they were just sleeping. So then he uh, he tried to get them to understand, but they didn't, and, and finally he just said, oh, well, okay, so we've I've already done my prayer and everything, and, and the Lord's already said that this cup's not going to pass, and then I've got to go, and and then I guess he knew Judas would be there soon, so he just said, go ahead and just sleep, sleep on now, my precious Jesus. Oh, dear God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, what a precious time it was, though. They, if they had known the precious time that it was, they wouldn't want to miss a moment of it. Just imagine you were there in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus and the time uh, leading right up to the time when he was going to be crucified on the cross. You know, and, the, and that great time that would be written down in the Bible and in all the history, and you were there. And uh, and everything and how glorious that would have been to have been there at a time like that, you know, and uh, and experienced all that with him, Jesus praying and everything like he was doing, and uh, and yet you know you you certainly wouldn't sleep knowing all of that, and uh, so uh, you know it was an important time, a historical time. Mm -mm -mm. My, my, my. Anybody would have wanted to have been there and been awake and seen it all. And so he said, uh, and so he, uh, he, uh, he, and he left them and went away and, oh, okay, he prayed a third time and he came 
and uh, said, uh, Rest on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. I don't know why it says, Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Well, at first he said, Sleep on. I guess this must have been a little bit of time passed in there somewhere. And then he said, after they slept a little bit longer, then he said, oh, he let them sleep a little bit longer. And then he said, well, okay, now's the time. Rise, let us be going. Behold, uh, he is at hand that doth betray me. So he knew Judas was coming and he knew about when he was going to be there. And while he yet spake, lo, uh, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude. Woo! Now look at that, you know, all those multitudes he had healed and everything. Now a great multitude comes with swords and and staves and uh, from the chief priest. They come order, you know, told by the chief priest to come and get them. They wanted them. You know, they decided, they decided that and told the multitude and convinced them to go get him. The chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying whom soever I shall kiss that same is he uh, the same one will be he that'll be him hold him fast oh <laughs> no, 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 that, that, that guy you know he gets his 30 pieces of silver and, and then he he betrays the Lord of glory and then he has the gall to, <laughs> as he, right as he's betraying him, you know, people like that, right as the, in the point that they're betraying him, right at the back, he's, he's just getting ready to stab you in the back, then he gives a good kiss. <laughs> oh my God, he walks up and kisses him and then, <laughs> and, and betrays him by that. Oh my goodness. Oh goodness gracious, I can't believe it sometimes when I read the stuff these people did. <laughs> of course, that's the reason why Jesus had to die on the cross, because just look how gross they were, you know. Had no love whatsoever, no understanding whatsoever. Nothing, no nothing, just you know, just betray a person, stab them in the back and do it while and then kiss them to do it. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my goodness. And then I think Jesus said to him, you mean you, you, you actually pulled the et to brute, but then you did it with a kiss. <laughs> so he said, uh, what did Jesus say to him now? He said, uh, and, and uh, forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master! Oh my goodness! Hail, Master! And kissed him. He 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 said, "Hail, Master!" You know, he said, "Yeah, you know, just like he comes and says, well, hello, Lord Jesus!' You know, hello, Lord Jesus! I love you. Let me kiss you on the cheek. I love you. Give you a holy kiss on the cheek. I love you so much." And then about that time, then those people be, grabs him. And they said, "Oh, we know now it was him." My Lord Jesus, and we've seen things like that happen. I mean, oh my, the God of some people. My, even after Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and people still sometimes do stuff like that. Mm -mm -mm. My, but that was the worst. <laughs> that was, and so he said, uh, Hail, Master. <laughs> and, just, and Jesus uh, said, Unto him, friend, <laughs> he still out him. Friend, I wouldn't have said friend. I said, oh, yep, sure. Friend, where, uh, wherefore art thou come? Then uh, came they and laid uh, hands on Jesus and and took him. And behold, uh, one of them uh, which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and and struck a servant of the 
high priest and smote off his ear. Mm -mm -mm. Then said Jesus unto him, imagine that. Now Jesus said, put up again thy sword unto his uh, place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And and I believe he said that, well, it's one of the books where he said uh, that he put that ear back on him, but uh, I thought that's what he said. And, uh, and I know he said in one of the books of it, it might have been Mark or Luke, probably Luke, he said, uh, you mean you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? You know, he asked him that question. In this book, though, he just said, friend, you know, and uh, so part of the writers caught one part of another part caught another part. But no doubt he probably said, friend, betrayest thou me with a kiss or something like that. And, uh, my, 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 mm, what a, what a, what a, it, it sure is getting full of intrigue now, it's, we, we're winding it down, and uh, so uh, he says, uh, uh, and Jesus said, uh, and he said, uh, he that dies by the smoke, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be? In that same hour, said Jesus, to the multitudes, are ye come out as against a thief which with swords? You know, and so he said, well, you know, what, what, he, what's with all these swords and all these, you know, like coming against just one person, you know, that's like a, a dozen cops coming against uh, one person, you know, that uh, uh, ran a stop sign or something, you know. <laughs> well, you know, just to be, I guess they think it'd be safe, you know, but uh, I can imagine uh, all those multitudes and all those people with swords and everything, you know, hundreds and hundreds of swords and other uh, weapons and everything coming against uh, Lord Jesus, <laughs> they must have thought the twelve legions of angels were going to come and say, try to save him or something. But they wouldn't have stood a chance against even one of those angels if, if those twelve a angels uh, decided to, you know, if he decided to call those twelve legions of angels, they, uh, the entire group of them wouldn't have stood a chance against one of those angels. And so, <laughs> and then it's going to be twelve legions. So I. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. I have no idea why they would think that they were gonna they were gonna need all them swords just to come in for one person like that. And um, they must have really been afraid of I me. Mean, and so he said, uh, "All right, and you come out with, against me with staves and knives and everything, part to take me. I uh, set." daily with you teaching in uh, the synagogue in the temple and ye laid no hand on me you know <laughs> oh man i can say something about that you know about stuff that's happened these days you know and everything but i'm not going to go into that <laughs> i'm not going to go into all that but <laughs> some of the things that people do just for uh opportunity of uh, camera opportunities and everything uh, and so um, maybe they were trying to get a photo op <laughs> a good photo op to play <laughs> but I'm not, uh, so he said uh, but all of the uh, all, but all this uh, was done that the scriptures of the uh, prophecies might be fulfilled then uh, all the uh, disciples uh, forsook him and and fled they all they all forsook him every one of the disciples 
Didn't it say that? Did it say all? I didn't think all. It said all. Um, it said then all. Oh my. All the disciples. All the disciples. All the disciples fled. Every one of them. Oh my goodness gracious. Totally pursued. He was totally pursued by everyone. Even though he had been with them every day teaching them about God and everything. And they, they that had laid hold on Jesus, uh, led Jesus, or led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. They were all assembled there waiting on him. Woo, they were waiting there with their kangaroo court. Oh yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna trap him in his words at that. We're gonna they're gonna sit there and wait. And then when he comes, then they're gonna uh, they're gonna try again uh, to. Uh, I was thinking that said they never questioned him again back there, but they didn't question him again until this the time right here. Uh, until the end, I guess, you know, what it was. Uh, but I thought they said that they never again, but at least they never did. They never did question him again after that time when he uh, put them to shame there for the last time. Uh, they never questioned him again until it come down to uh, the, uh, the time for him to go to the cross. And then here they're going to, try again to trap him. I'm pretty sure they're going to try again here to trap him again one more time. You know, they, uh, and so it says, uh, it says here, it says, and the, and the, uh, okay, false witnesses, stop it. And, uh, to see the end, okay, so, but Peter, Followed him after uh, from afar off. He followed from afar off until he went ahead and followed to see what was going to happen and followed him unto the high priest's uh, palace and went in and sat. He tried to sit incognito, I guess, sat with the servants to see the end of it all. Now the chief uh, priest and the elders and all of the uh, council sought false witnesses against Jesus to uh, put him to death. Okay, so that's the reason is they were already determined they was going to put him to death. And so they was having one last council thing, you know, to see if they could but what they wanted was false witnesses to say it, so they wouldn't have to. But then I guess they couldn't find any, and so then they finally had to try to figure out a way, uh, but found uh, none. Uh, they had found none yet, or found none. Okay, yea, therefore, many false witnesses came. Wait a minute. But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, uh, yet found they none. Uh, as the last came two false witnesses, at the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest, oh, the high priest uh, arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which 
these witnesses against the why why are they witnessing against the he wanted him to say something about he wanted him to say oh they're lying or something like that you know uh but jesus just held his feet and jesus held his you know i guess he wanted him to, he wanted jesus to get see jesus get all upset and say oh they're lying they're lying you know go in and then get into a big argument like that so that they could have a reason to kill him but jesus held his uh his peace and the high priest uh, answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou will tell us whether thou uh, be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou Hast thou hast said? Woo! <laughs> you know that got him upset. Oh boy! I said, "Well, here he is. He's he's admitting to, uh, you know, uh, he's saying he's he's come as the the son of God, and you know, he's probably you know to take our place or something like that." They probably were saying to themselves, "Well, you know, I." God was going to send somebody. <laughs> he would have certainly to come to some fine upstanding people like us and warn us about it first. <laughs> and and God, God would have put us uh, ahead of him, you know, and told us he was coming or something like that. You know, and they, they thought they were so holy and righteous and everything. But God didn't seek their advice about it at all when he was deciding to send Jesus to this earth. And, um uh, so it, it says, um, okay, so they said, Jesus saith unto him, thou says, and nevertheless I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man, uh, uh, the man, Son of Man uh, stirring, uh, I thought it was sitting, sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of uh, witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. You know, and of course, Jesus knew it was his time, and he knew he had to do it. He'd been already praying, and already prayed to the God to let him pass, cut, cut past if it were possible and all that, and God had already told him, no, this has to be done and everything, and so he uh, just went ahead, you know, and told him the, the truth and everything, you know, and didn't try to get out of it or anything like that. He just told him the straight truth, and he knew that by telling them the truth, you know, that it was going to happen, and, and it had to happen anyway, and so he didn't try to hide it any further. And But, uh, you know, if he'd been trying to get off, you know, uh, out of it, if he'd been trying to get out of it, uh, he would have, you know, known not to. Uh, of course, he wouldn't have said things like that that he knew was going to cause them to uh, have something against him. And uh, but he had already surrendered to God and surrendered to the fact that he was headed to the cross, and so you know, uh, he just I can see why he went ahead and said that. What shall what think ye they, uh, what think ye they, uh, answered and said, He is guilty on of death. For blasphemy is what they meant. Guilty of death. Then uh, did they spit in his face. Oh my Lord. And buffeted him. And then others, uh, you know, uh, smote him, saith, with the psalms, palms of their hands, you know. You know, like daring him, you know, if he was really, you know, the son of God and all like that, you know, go ahead and, you know, and show us and. Uh, you know, go ahead and oppose us in this and everything, you know, but Jesus was already surrendered to God and he knew what he had to do. And uh, if he had, uh, 
decide to oppose it or, you know, call the angels or whatever like that, well, then, then the price wouldn't have been paid for our sins, and then we wouldn't have had the salvation that we have and the opportunity to be born again and receive the love of God and all that kind of thing in order to, you know, reconcile ourselves to God. And so that, that was the price that had to be paid, and Jesus had already accepted it. And so, um, uh, and there really wasn't anything that he could do to, to uh, reconcile the high priest and those people to understand what, who he was and how he came and what the reason was for him coming, you know, to make them understand God's plan or anything like that. It was totally beyond them, you know, and there wouldn't been anything, any, any, anything he could have said on that. And, and, uh, but more it makes for, mm -mm, sure makes for something, I'll tell you. And so he said, uh, uh, and saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote us? <laughs> who is he that smote thee? Oh boy, what a pitiful thing. Oh, they, you know, they just, you know, uh, uh, put more condemnation upon themselves with every, everything they did and said. Now Peter sat without his the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he uh, denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest and when he was gone out into the porch another maid another maid came to him and uh you know they said that again and oh that thing is messing me up okay we got it i get too close to the keyboard and everything and so he said and they that had laid it, okay. And another maid came to him and said uh, unto him that were there, uh, this uh, fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know this man. And after a, a while, uh, came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter surely thou also art one of them for thy uh, speech betrayeth thee then began he to curse and to swear saying I know not the man and immediately the cock Crew, uh, uh, yeah, the cock crowed. The cock, immediately the cock crowed. It should be crowed. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then he was reminded, of course, of what Jesus said about that, that Jesus told him that that was going to happen. And uh, I'm sure he started becoming sorrowful for what he was doing. And, oh, my, my, my. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it's. Uh, Kind of sad in a way, but it just took him a while to add everything up. But but then once he got everything added up and he began to see the love of God displayed and everything on that cross, and all, then he knew then that, and he became a uh, mighty crusader for Jesus. And he ended up being crucified himself. I believe he was the one that was crucified upside down, but he, was in, he did end up being crucified. And all of the disciples, I think, every, every, every last one of them, I think, down to the very last one, I think he ended up with a violent death like that. Uh, but then, so then Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, comes down on the road to Damascus and calls Paul to go ahead and and, uh, com and, com and put the, and complete the, uh, putting out the gospel into, uh, as a missionary into all the, the world, that known world there that, at that time and everything. Uh, because I think, um, uh, uh, at some point there, uh, maybe John was on the Isle of Patmos uh, at some during some of the times when Paul was uh, doing his missionary travels 
It'll have to look up the exact dates of that. But most of them, I think, had already been uh, put to death, some kind of violent death, before uh, Apostle Paul, you know, even had met Jesus on the road of Damascus. But anyway, Jesus was able to continue his uh, ministry by coming to Paul on, his, on, his, on the road to Damascus, and and he became Christian and started, and uh, and by, and uh, that all of the disciples became crusaders up until the point which they then they caught up to him and killed them the same way they did Jesus, and and so they gave their life for the gospel, and uh, and then Apostle Paul surrendered his life into his missionary for the gospel. And all like that. And so it was a marvelous thing in the end. A lot of victory in the end. Uh, there. Uh, and as we get on in the New Testament. We'll study all that out. And see exactly how all that transpired. Uh, and so he said. Uh, I do not know his man. Cock crew. Uh, uh, and Peter. Uh, remembered the uh, words of Jesus which uh, said unto him before the cock crew crows three times thou shalt deny or twice before the cock crows twice thou shalt deny me thrice and he uh, went out and and wept bitterly and so now we're going into chapter 27. When the uh, morning was come, all of the chief priests and elders and the people uh, took uh, counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had, uh, when they had uh, bound him, they laid uh, they led him away, and was well, he was headed for uh, pretty much to Golgotha. I think he stopped by. Uh, they stopped him by the, uh, the king, maybe, or somebody else. He had to go see before he actually went there. Let's see if I've got that here. Uh, Okay, I think we got the wrong. Yeah, somehow or another. I know we hadn't. Yeah, let me see what is going on here. That shouldn't be right. Okay. Okay, I have got page numbers on these. I guess maybe you'd think I'd look at them. This says, uh, that same hour, okay, so, and ye uh, came up out as against it. Okay, so it's not that one. Uh, oh, okay, I, yeah. I'm not even thinking here at all. Turn the page. And uh, unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, this is where he goes before Pontius Pilate. This is all happening too fast. Need to slow down a little bit here. <laughs> he, uh, I'm not ready for him to be crucified yet. And so, but now he, but they said that, and now they let him away. And then, then it says, then they took him to Pontius Pilate and uh, uh, delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. You know, then Judas, which had betrayed him when he uh, saw that he was condemned repented him 
himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest <laughs> and elders saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, oh, what? <laughs> you know, and, they, and of course they didn't, didn't care. You know, what is, what is that to us? You know, we hard to have him now, you know, see uh, thou to that, you know, you know, just uh, <laughs> <laughs> go do whatever you have to do. You know, go tell him you're sorry. <laughs> On his way to the cross, just tell him you're sorry. You know, it's something. They say, but it's too late now. You know, say, we're not going to, uh, we don't, we don't need, the, we don't want you to give us some money back or we can't, we're not going to undo it now. We already have him, you know. And uh, that just shows you how gross they are again. You know, this guy that betrayed him, I acknowledge that it was innocent blood, and so that didn't even that didn't even cause them any pause. They just said, you know, too bad, you know, <laughs> the deal was already made, you know. And uh, my, my, my. I can't believe some of this stuff, even though I've heard it before. And <laughs> all my life, I can't believe it when I'm going as I'm going over it, uh, and how all this. Uh, uh, all this kind of stuff like this, you know, and the details of it and everything that I had forgotten. Woo! Mm -mm -mm. What a sad thing. Poor Judas, he couldn't get out of it. He tried, you know, that I, I didn't know he had repented that quick, but he repented really, really quick there and, and realized the mistake that he had made and everything, and yet there was nothing he could do, you know, and oh boy, sometimes. Sometimes we do stuff like that, you know, and you got to think ahead of time, you know, what the repercussions of what you do are, because then you can't undo it, make mistakes like that, say things you shouldn't say and all that kind of thing. Oh, my, 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 what a marvelous story. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to have to sing old rugged, old rugged Cross all over again and at the cross and all that, uh, And uh, but I can't do it now or I'll probably start crying. Oh, oh man, it's sad. It is so sad. This is so sad. Mm -mm -mm. And, uh, and everything. And uh, so uh, all, all Judas had to do was just to go hang himself, you know. He said, um, what is that to us? You know, too bad for you. You're the one that's going to pay the uh, you pay the cost in a way. But then they will, too, for, for, for plotting that. And he cast uh, down the pieces of, of, uh, of silver in the temple and the uh, uh, departed and went and hanged himself. Oh my goodness. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. Well, they recognized that, and then yet they they didn't recognize the rest of it. That's strange too. And they took they took counsel and brought with them the uh, potter's bill. You know, they t oh they took counsel and bought with the money the potter's field to bury strangers in G give it to charity or you know kind of in, in a sense you know trying to ease their own conscience i guess wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day oh my goodness the field of blood mm -mm -mm. All the things people get themselves into, you know, they, they try to try to ease their conscience by going and buying something that they could put the poor in or the strangers in, and uh, you know, like giving it to charity. And then, <laughs> but people knew about it and called it the field of blood thereafter to remind them everybody would know from then on, you know, what the and be remembered, be reminded of what those uh, chief priests did in paying 30 pieces of silver, you know, to get the Lord of glory, Jesus, 
in order to hang him on the cross. And uh, and then they tried to buy that potter's, they bought that potter's, potter's field and recognized that they couldn't put it in the treasury, but they didn't go ahead and recognize that uh, the rest of the story. Oh, it's just sad. It's a sad situation. Mm -mm -mm. My, my, my. Oh, man, I don't know if I can go on with this. It's so sad. I need to, you know, I need to stop and fall on my face before God and repent or something. Oh, it's, it's terrible. Okay, so, wherefore that field was called the field of blood, and th uh, there was fulfilled that which was spoken by uh, Jeremy, Jeremiah the prophet, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued whence where and when they of the children of the children of Israel did value. Well, you know, they, they, the children, okay, the children of Israel did value him at 30 pieces of silver. Okay, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before uh, governor and, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto them, to him, Thou sayest. So he says that again. He says, Yeah, thou sayest. You know, you know well, he's not going to turn away from what he has to do. And, and when he was, when he was a, so then, and when he was accused of the chief priest and Elders, he uh, uh, answered nothing. Then said uh, Pilate unto him, uh, Hearest thou not how many things they thy witnesses are against thee? Uh, and he uh, answered him to to. Uh, Never a he did never answer a word. It is much that the uh, the governor marvelled greatly. And so, you know, when he didn't answer a word and everything, well, then of course Pilate starts getting getting frightened and uh, and thinking, oh my, you know, what have I got here? You know, and maybe all these things are true that he's saying. You know, he's conducting himself, you know, better than. Uh, and uh, with the uh, honesty and integrity and character and everything, and maybe what he's saying is more true than what the witnesses were saying. So then pa Peter tried to uh, then uh, figure out a way, you know, to <laughs> some kind of political maneuver in order to let Jesus off. And that's a, there again, a sad story. He tried to let him off, but the Jews themselves <laughs> Imagine that he tries to let him off, and the Jewish people themselves, so that it was solely them that crucified him, not Pontius Pilate. When Pontius Pilate tried to let him off, and so then he said, "I wash my hands of this," but of course he couldn't wash his hands of it any more than Judas could. Judas tried. Judas tried to wash his hands of it at the end, but he couldn't either. And uh, you know, none of them could could do it once they you know found themselves there. But actually, in the end, it was the Jewish people themselves that, you know, was crying, crucify him, crucify him. You know, they uh, they got caught up in the moment. Somehow or another, they'd already be con been convinced by the chief priest and everything, got caught up in the moment. And uh, it just shows you what happens. And, oh, that's, that's a sad thing. That's a, well, I might pray here pretty soon. Let me get another verse or two in. Uh, and he said... Uh, now it, uh, now at that feast, the 
governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas, and therefore when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, when, uh, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for every they, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. He knew they had delivered him for envy. Pilate knew that they were envious of him and everything. But so, but anyway, so they asked, he asked them then to try to, you know, get Jesus off. He said, well, which one would you, you know, you can choose to let Jesus off, you know, and go ahead and, and, uh, and, and, and hang or crucify whatever this guy, Barabbas, which was, I believe, a murderer. And, uh, and so then that was their chance to let him off. But then they, even then, would not go ahead and accept that, you know, that uh, type of a deal and went ahead and just still insisted on the fact that, no, even even at, the, even at the cost of letting the murderer go, we still want Jesus crucified. And so it just gets sadder and sadder. Well, I, I can't take no more. I'm going to stop and pray. <laughs> I'm going to stop and pray. You know, oh, my goodness. And you know, you, know, you know what they said, too. And that was even worse. I don't even want to hear what they said. <laughs> we'll get that tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> or this afternoon or something. And so, but I'm going to stop and pray. Oh, dear Father. My, my, my. Mm -mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, may we understand thy love and why that you paid such an awful price. Oh, my dear Jesus. Just bless us, dear Jesus. Help us make it through the rest of the day. Oh, dear God. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. And so now we pray, dear Father. Oh, Father, in the name of thy holy son, Jesus. Just bless us in this, Lord. Bless this reading. Oh, dear God. I'm thankful, dear God, that you are, are teaching me these things and and then I am um, understanding them more all the time as I live more and more longer and everything. And, oh, Father, uh, uh, Father, I just pray that you uh, that uh, you know people will hear the messages and the lost will be saved through the uh, through Thy sacrifice and everything. And all oh, people will be healed and and so forth. And we just pray now, Father, just bless us, dear God, and bless us through this reading of Thy Word and. Oh, Father, uh, that uh, we know uh, what a price that you have paid, and, and may it lead us to do right, and may it lead us to have more love in our life. May it lead us to be better witnesses and better servants of God. And now, Lord, I just pray, uh, oh, dear Father, that you would just turn your eye toward the sick people. And, uh, oh, dear Father, just, uh, uh, oh, Father, accept their, the prayers that we pray. Uh, for them to be raised up and healed, dear God. In the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, I pray that you would heal people of all these terminal illnesses and all of the all these incurable diseases and things. And, oh, Father, dear God, my, 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 that you would uh, uh, send thy angels to heal them in whatever way is necessary. Dear God, we just pray that you would heal people of cancer of every kind. Lord, any kind of any kind of metastatic formation that is, stop it before it starts. And Lord, you should heal people, stop all the viruses and other things from from getting in people's lungs and all. And we just pray now that you'd heal people of any kind of brain tumors or any kind of a, a nervous disorder in their brain or in their mind or anything. Dear God, uh, uh, heal people of epilepsy, heal people of Alzheimer's. But uh, if anyone has any kind of a tumor anywhere in their body, Lord, that you just uh, uh, surgically, uh, divine, divine, with our divine surgery, you know, with our divine angels or our divine surgery, you just go in and just scoop all that out, clear down to the quantum level. Just take all those tumors out. Dear God, dry them up like you did with a fig tree or something. And Lord, dear God, just remove all tumors from people's, especially from their brain, top of their brain or in their brain or under their, under their cranial cavity. Lord, that you'd heal them of all those things and heal people of all their Alzheimer's, dear God. Any kind of memory loss, uh, any kind of a 
uh, any kind of a poor blood flow that might cause stroke or TIAs. And Lord, dear God, that you would just cause a circulation. Everyone's blood circulation, dear God, to be free and, and uh, flow right and uh, not be any kind of a, a, a low blood pressure, high blood pressure, anything like that, that you would just, you know, just uh, divinely dissolve all plaques and a uh, Oh, dear God, that you would, that there would be no hardening of arteries or anything or any kind of a, a stoppage of the blood flow. Oh, dear God, that people might be free. Oh, dear God, they're free of that. Oh, they're free of coronary uh, uh, vessels, uh, problems in their heart and all those kinds of things. Oh, dear God, just give us the wisdom to know how to uh, prevent that, but also that you would, uh, would heal people of any kind of difficulty with their blood vessels. And Lord, dear God, that they may not have a, a heart problems and strokes and things like that. And Lord, dear God, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you just heal people of any kind of lung problem. Oh, Father, I just pray, you, oh, dear God, just heal people of any kind of effects of either COVID-19 or any kind of viruses of any kind, any kind of flu bug, any kind of bronchitis problems, allergy problems, asthma problems, anything to affect their lungs, uh, or anything that would give them a emphysema or COPD that you would just clear the lungs out, Lord, and clear them out and, and, and heal them of all the smoking damage and everything. And Lord, that they might lay down them cigarettes and never come back to them again, Lord, and and that I may have to restore somehow none of those lungs. Oh, dear God, of all that damage and everything, that they may be able to breathe freely and have a, uh, the lungs that will be able to, to utilize their capacity till the end of the person, uh, till the person uh, uh, passes on. And, oh, dear God, that they would have good, strong lungs. And Lord, that you'd heal them, Lord, of all that. And heal them of the addiction to nicotine and so forth. And Lord, I just pray now that you would heal people. Oh, dear God, of every kind of, uh, uh, every kind of uh, uh, irritation in their joints or any kind of uh, arthritic uh, uh, arthritis or rheumatism, rheumatoid arthritis, dear God, or any kind of bone disorders, dear God. Oh, dear God, any kind of leukemia or any kind of uh, uh, imbalance in the in the, the red and white carpals, dear God, that you'd just heal them of all of that and to clear all that up and kind of, any kind of bone cancer that you'd heal. And Lord, dear God, I just pray that you give people good, strong, solid bones without any osteoporosis. And Lord, dear God, just heal their joints and heal their cartilage and all, and cartilage. And, and dear God, just bless people with their, any kind of knee problems or any kind of hip problems or yet heal their hip, hip joints. And Lord, if there be any fracture fissures or anything in their hip, dear God, that you would just uh, solidify that, you know, and just to heal her, heal all that up and heal any pain caused it from any kind of hip damage. And Lord, dear God, we just pray, dear God, that you would just cause them to have good, strong bones and good, strong joints. They might dance before you in the Holy Spirit and, and uh, praise God upon that holy ground, jump and shout and, and rejoice in the Lord. They would have the ability to do that, that you might take the uh, shackles off their feet, that they can dance in the Spirit. And Lord, dear God, uh, with power and strength and vim and vitality, they can dance. Oh, dear God, that you would just, uh, oh, shout, shout, shout it all out. Shout out all the fear and doubt. Dance and shout. Dance and shout and shout the fear out and all the disease out. In the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. And now, dear God, I just pray, Father, that you would heal people of any kind of a, uh, any kind of multiple sclerosis or, or uh, spinal meningitis, uh, dear God, and heal them any back pain, any kind of lower back pain, any kind of problem with disc or any problem with the vertebrae or the joints or any kind of pinched nerve, any kind of sciatic problem, heal people of the skin that nerve pain, dear God, and all oh, dear God, that you just heal people of any kind of any kind of scabies, rashes, or anything on the skin. And Lord, dear God, you would heal people of all shingles and problems like that. And Father, I pray now that you would, oh, Father, dear Jesus, that you would heal uh, people of any kind of liver damage, uh, any kind of hepatitis, dear God, or um, or um, uh, cirrhosis of the liver caused by alcohol, dear God, that you just uh, cause people to have the strength and the ability and the joy of the Lord to lay down that alcohol, that bottle and, Lord, walk off and never come back to that bottle again, never again. Lord, that you might restore their lungs uh, and, or that you might restore their liver. Lord, that you give them a, a, a restoration in their liver, Lord, and, and heal them of all that damage that they've done through alcohol. And Lord, dear God, now we just pray for healthy livers and he he healthy lungs and, and heart. Give them a good, strong heart to the last many years, a good, strong ticker, good, 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 strong electrical functions in their heart and all that, dear God. Uh, oh, dear God, and make it beat right on time, last a long time. And Lord, dear God, now give them a good, strong heart, muscle and all. And Lord, our Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you just break the addiction to, to uh, uh, 
Drugs like crack cocaine and cocaine, heroin, dear God, methamphetamine, peanut butter, talk, all the barbiturates, all the COVID, all, all, all of the opioid drugs and all of the uh, oxycontin and things like that. That you just break that addiction. Uh, they break the addiction to, to uh, nicotine and to alcohol and all of those things. Large that people make you be able to walk off from those things, never come back to them again. If, they, if you would lift them up to that high mountain of joy, you will. You have a high mountain of joy. With a lots of vim and vigor, and lots of energy, and lots of uh, uh, lots of good, uh, uh, joyful feelings, and everything that is a thousand times greater than any kind of buzz or high or speedy feeling or euphoric feeling or 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 uh, a rushy feeling or any kind of thing, uh, uh, any kind of uh, buzz or rush that they might get from drugs. That you can heal all of that, dear God, and uh, all of that, and, and uh, give them a joy that is a thousand times greater than any of that can ever possibly give them. Father, now we pray that you would bless all of the leaders of our country. Dear God, give them the strength and the backbone and give them the character and the honesty and the integrity. Lord, dear God, to lead us in the right direction. Oh, Father, that they would be able to stand up and be counted for righteousness. And Lord, that they would lead people toward the tracks, uh, 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 the future tracks of visions of, of character, honesty and integrity and transparency in this country. Built upon a solid foundation of Judeo-Christian principles and built upon the cornerstone, Christ Jesus, uh, as this nation was made great by. And Lord, dear God, that they have good family babes and good morals and character of every kind that they would be see the need uh, to protect our liberties and freedoms that we have well, they have been hard fought for and, uh, and bought with blood and everything to protect those. And the only way that they can protect those is through the through uh, character and integrity and honesty and forthrightness and transparency and uh, based upon uh, uh, solid principles. And, Lord, as they would do that and they would see that and they would lead in that direction. And, Lord, now we pray, dear God, that all of the Congress and all of our governors of our particular states, Dear God, that they would see the need to lead in these good directions of honesty and integrity, frugality, uh, uh, of uh, transparency and forthrightness. And all, oh, dear God, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, seek to display character and, uh, <clears throat> and influence people to have more character, more honesty and integrity. And Lord, that they may lead the country into a direction of appreciation and gratitude for its freedoms and liberties. And now we pray to God all over city, county, uh, city and county leaders, and as well as state leaders, that they, dear God, would lead and use their influence to bless this country. So Lord, to lead it in the right direction. And Lord, now we pray for all of our teachers, all of our public school teachers. And all of our private school teachers and all of our professors in the universities and all, that they uh, would uh, uh, take on the high moral ground and the high, uh, and seek to achieve a great character of honesty and integrity and a great appreciation for this country and learn uh, the price that was paid for it and understand uh, how to keep it strong and by uh, <coughs> using their influence with all their students and anybody under their tutelage, that they would give them a sense and instill in them a sense of gratitude, a sense of, of the, the need to maintain principles, to maintain the principles upon which the country was built, to maintain and go forward in the future with integrity and honesty and morality and character of every kind and, and transparency. And Lord, now we pray that you would bless Oh, dear God, all of our police officers, dear God, that you just surround all of our police officers, our angels in protection, protect them against harm, that they would be able to make it to the home uh, every night with, to be with their families without any harm to themselves or their family, that they would serve out a wonderful career, add a lot to the uh, to the uh, uh, to our strength of our law and order system, and that a lot to this country. They'll come to the end of their career and realize that they have contributed uh, wonderfully to the preservation of law and order and the preservation of a strong country, and that they would feel rewarded for that and everything that you'd protect them against any kind of violence uh, while they're doing the job, any kind of aggression or anything. And, uh, Lord, just protect them and their job and all, and their, and protect their honor. We ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And Lord, you protect all of our pastors. 
and leaders of our churches, all of our assistant pastors, associate pastors, uh, all of the choir directors, music directors, music pastors, youth pastors, youth directors, uh, uh, Sunday school teachers, oh dear God, and uh, all of the elders and deacons and others in the church, uh, they would have a great evangelistic spirit, a great passion for the Lord. Oh dear God, that you'd give them great wisdom for that part of that leadership, a great wisdom to affect the people under their influence and under their tutelage, dear God, that they would be able to affect them toward uh, uh, moving toward an area of, uh, uh, of more love for souls, more love for, and then the more seeking for revival, uh, more see, the more awareness of the need for revival, more need, more awareness of evangelistic outreach. And Lord, that you just lead them to teach a, a moral character and integrity and honesty. But, and we pray now that you just, uh, uh, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, we ask these things. And now we pray. That you would bless all of our farmers and our ranchers, mm -mm. dear God, just bless all of our ranchers, dear God, with my, with a, lots of prosperity, uh, healthy livestock, uh, healthy cattle, and he healthy horses and all. Lord, bringing good prices, and dear God, I just pray that you just bless them there, and protect them against vandalism, especially down south, dear God, protect them against uh, people breaking into their barns, into their houses, and into their equipment, and vandalizing their equipment, Lord, that you just protect them against that, cause them to be prosperous in every way. And Lord, for all of our farmers, we just pray now that you'd bless all of our farmers with a great harvest, with a wonderful, uh, marvelous crop, and uh, that bring good prices and give them a great prosperity, give them a protect, great productive output, and, and protect them against vandalism and so forth. And we ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. Now we pray that you would bless all of our missionaries in our foreign, all our foreign areas, dear God, with their servants, that they would be protected against persecution, be protected against undue harm to themselves and their family, that they would be protected, and that you would give them a passion for the lost, my, my, my. give them a great passion to wrap the outreach and, and a great uh, wisdom and great understanding and ability to reach the lost people and the ability to understand the languages and so forth. And now we pray that they would have all the support they need and Lord, just bless them in every way and return them home safely. We're asking all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And now, Lord, we just pray, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, you'd bless all of our pets and keep them free of any kind of attack by wild animals. And Lord, just protect them and cause them to have a happy life. And Father, just protect all the smaller ones from being attacked by the large, larger ones. And Father, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. That you would just uh, uh, cause them, uh, if there be any, uh, 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 protect them from disease and pests and all like that. But if there be any homeless animals, Lord, that you would find them uh, nice forever homes and a heavenly atmosphere with lots of good food and lots of good support and lots of ability and places to have fun and all and people to play with them and everything. And you just give them good, all of the homeless animals, give them good homes, dear God, good forever homes. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. And now we pray, dear God, you bless us and heal us of all of our diseases, dear God. Lead us up forward in our love. And oh, dear God, give us greater love for the lost and greater evangelistic spirit. Lord, give us a great uh, ability to put forth our message and put forth our evangelistic effort. And Lord, dear God, that you just uh, uh, you heal us of all of our diseases. Father, and heal anybody, especially that has any kind of cancer or metastatic formation of tumors in the brain, tumors on the brain, in the brain, under the, under the cranial cavity or anything like that. Lord, it would affect them. And Lord, they've got any epilepsy and all them other kinds of things that, that could happen. To God, it was pray that you'd, you'd bless people against Alzheimer's, against epilepsy, against all the uh, nervous disorders of any kind. Dear God, I was pray that you'd protect people against tumors forming on their brain or in their brain or under their cranial cavity. And we'll pray now, dear God, that you just bless us with a good evening and good afternoon and lord uh, give us a great afternoon and a blessed evening and lord and uh, uh, give us a uh, health and strength and grace in our lives love for the lost and and give us a good night's rest tonight that we may serve you better tomorrow but we ask all of these things in the name of thy holy son jesus amen amen and amen praise god praise god praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah praise the lord